Hi. How's everyone doing? Good. That's good. I'm I'm happy that you're all doing good. Is anyone doing bad? No surprises. Certain individuals. Um, so uh, hi everybody, and welcome to the How to YouTube panel. Uh, first off, how has everyone been enjoying HarmonyCon so far? Good. Good. Uh, any highlights so far? Uh, yeah. You met Claire. I'm sorry. <laughs> did you did you like Claire? Of course. Was she nice? Oh, yeah. Good. Otherwise, I would have said Claire. What the heck? <laughs> she needs to be nice. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah any anyone else highlights? Signing on the book. Sweet collection. Yes. You. There wasn't any merch available from like twenty. 18 onwards, and it's just cool to see merch in person again. It's good to see merch yeah, yeah. in person. Isn't it nice to be back at a convention, guys? Like, yeah. 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 So, so um, yes, you have one? Ingrid Nelson. Ingrid Nelson, nice. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's cool to see the guests here. Ingrid's uh, one with the yoga. I don't know if they have a yoga panel here this year, but I, I, don't, I don't know. They've had them in the past. Um, uh, but yeah, any other, any other highlights people want to shout out? Yeah, in the back. Talking to me. All right. Yeah. I saw. I saw another hand back here. Yeah. You found a free. Whoa. Uh, oh wait, that's a that's a a what plushie? A what? A, a, did you say an anon plushie? Oh my. Oh. Oh my gosh. Anonymous is is out and about. Um, I've seen two green guys going around. The, 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 there's one like that's a, a cow, uh, yeah, there's one that's a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, uh, and then there's, there's one walking around with like a mayor sign. Yeah. Mayor the mayor's all he says. Yeah, that's all he says. <laughs> um, so, uh, so welcome in, thanks for joining us here. This is, uh, again, the, it's the How to YouTube panel. And uh, there's going to be a lot of back and forth happening with this panel. Uh, we also will eventually be joined by a third member. I don't know who it is. <laughs> Do you not? No, do you? Well, I know that they keep asking what room is the panel in. I know, they haven't yeah. figured it out yet. <laughs> um, so eventually uh, Gabe, or Black Griffin, is going to be joining us up here as well. Um, whoa, there's a fox back there, guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, a very, hugs? there's a very, like, really cool chrysalis, um, like, fursuit that we saw earlier. Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I got to try out the the, the hooves. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of freaky seeing them change into a change lane. <laughs> um, but yeah, so there's going to be a lot a lot of back and forth here. Uh, we're here to not only offer uh, advice, but uh, answer your questions in regards, you know, to anyone having any sorts, whether it's starting a YouTube channel or maybe you've been running one, talking about um, maybe the the there secret workings of. Uh, there's two seats. You can choose which one you sit in. Black Griffin, everybody, joining us up here. And then, and then hello. And then, uh, so, so yeah, it's going to be, uh, and then Paleo Sino. Hi. And, and I'm AC Race Best. And, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking to you guys about YouTubes here tonight. You're not a YouTuber. Go away. <laughs> you, you think so? Why do you, why does everyone like you so much, Claire? <laughs> I have nothing to do, so I showed up. I should... Uh, I'm his editor. Doesn't that count for something? Okay. Yeah, she is my editor. She knows how to YouTube. She has a... You have a YouTube channel? Yes. Claire Coconuts. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, all right, fine. I'll be nice to Claire, gosh. Um, but yeah, so, so again, uh, we're going to be bouncing things off of the audience. You guys let us know what you want to know. Um, a lot of Q&A going to be involved in this one. Uh, how's, your, how's your day been going? What? What about you? Oh, all right. Guys, we're, we're very entertaining. All right, so, so just because to warm us all up and uh, make sure that we're, we're nice and ready, this side, I know you're, you're working against a bigger crowd here, but you guys make some noise, like just as much noise as you can make. Yeah! 
Now that side over there, you got the least amount of people. Can you beat that? Woo! That's pretty good. Now middle, you have the most, so you're gonna have to impress me. Make noise, come on. Woo! All right, now we're all gonna work together. Count of three, one, two, three, go! It is so good to be back at conventions. All right, thank you all for uh, putting up with me. So, does anyone have any YouTube questions out there? All right. Yes, right in the front. I'm trying to start my YouTube channel, and I have no idea, like, how. Okay, so the question is, I'm trying to start a YouTube channel, and I have no idea how. To get subscribers. To get subscribers. Claire says you're in the same boat. Should we get, get a mic up here or something and have people come and ask questions, or do, should we... Um, you know, I didn't... Because you didn't cause, ask cause, about. Yeah, because usually when we're in a smaller room like this, we, we kind of just... Oh, okay, that works. As long as people can hear. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, who wants to start? You. Oh. Um, well, <laughs> there's something called a call to action in, in YouTube, uh, where in videos where at the, either at the end of the video or in the beginning of the video, which is apparently more effective um, to just, like, ask people to subscribe before you actually go into the video. Um, where it's like, oh yeah, I'm going to be talking about this in this video, or I'm going to be doing something in the video, please subscribe if you want to see more, and then you do the thing, or you do it at the end. That, that's called a call to action. Also, I mean, making videos helps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. See, now you don't, now you know what you didn't know. Make videos. Yeah, yes? What, what uh, software do you use? The for editing. Software for editing. Premiere, Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere. Does it cost any money? Um, it do, well, you can always get a free trial of things and see if it, it's like your jam first. Um, but I, there are like student discounts. Yes. And, and <laughs> I, I'm on a student thing, but yeah, you do have to pay. It's like a monthly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not trying. Yeah. I didn't uh, yeah, I would like to say uh, uh, Sony Vegas is, yeah. is what, yeah. is what well, we Well, it's use. just called Vegas Pro now, because they dropped the Sony. No, I still use Sony Vegas uh, oh, 3.0. Okay. 3.0? Yeah. Um, Woo! But yeah, well, yeah. yeah iMovie is free, though, if you, like, iMovie's pretty good. That's I know people hate on iMovie, iMovie yeah. but that's how I started editing. Yeah, yeah, yeah I didn't start out on, uh... Yeah, if you edit yeah. on a Mac. I didn't start. I started out with free software. This, this, whatever your computer comes with yeah. is good enough. It works. Yeah. And then you like if you start doing like bigger, bigger stuff, yeah. you can upgrade. The first and video. And also the learning curve is smaller on the free program. Yes. So it, you, it is perfectly adequate. It works. Half of my videos I could edit in free software if I wanted to. Yeah. The the first video I ever put up on my AC Racebiz channel, I made with. Um, Windows Movie Maker. Yes. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So, so it's it's and, and actually that's a great point because if you do jump immediately into, uh, yeah, a, a bigger a bigger video program, it could be overwhelming because there's so many options. But one thing that is offered at at many schools uh, is classes uh, or our classes to be able to learn those programs, and those can be incredibly useful, having people kind of walk you through the basics and then seeing, oh, this is how we can progress. So, yeah, yeah. question in the back. Let's say that you have no, no experience with talent in editing, how can you find an editor? Okay, so if you have no experience or no talent with editing, so <laughs> most of us should be able to answer that. the no talent part at least. Um, uh, with editing, how do you find an editor? Is is the question? Um, well, how did you find your editor? You just date someone, <laughs> <laughs> and then ask him pretty please and dangle some money in front of him. Um, uh, I was gonna say like nobody nobody really starts out nobody really starts out as like a a, a good editor or or. Or unless they're a prodigy or whatever. Um, you always start small, like just start like with different projects, like look up tutorials. Though, the fact that YouTube removed dislikes is really bad for tutorials. Oh my god, <sighs> I can't believe they did that. You, YouTube, YouTube makes a lot of bad decisions. So as a YouTuber, careful. be... Careful now. Careful, big hey, brother look right at that camera. And YouTube makes a lot of bad decisions. Demonetize. I don't care. I will take one for the team, YouTube. Uh, so be ready for that. Anyways, uh, uh, so um, for me, I've always done my own editing, and when I started out, it wasn't pretty. Yeah. You know, yeah. there, there were a lot of projects that I made prior to the first one I ever uploaded, and then from that point of that first upload that went onto YouTube, 
you know, I, I can see the progression over the years. So even though right now it might feel like, like, I feel like a lot of people when they end up going the higher route, it also has to do with lack of time. Like, I don't have time to learn the editing process, but I have ideas. And in that case, it, it can be useful. Typically, I mean, the best route if you're gonna go with an editor is probably to hire somebody as such, you know, as opposed, because there are some people who try to go the route of, hey, if you work for me, I'm gonna get you so many people to follow you, what do we call that? Working for uh, exposure. Exposure. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's up to you as an editor if you want to go that route, but uh, just be careful with that. Yeah. Uh, you know. But yeah, I would say just like if you if you want to like try to uh, like mess with an editing program, just like experiment with different things. Like uh, what I started out before I even like had my Paleo Steno channel is that I would make. On, on my old old channel, I like experiment with like making music videos. I just like pick a song I really like and then throw different clips together and just like try to make them work. So yep. Uh, I know you had a question. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. 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 Oh, storage. storage. So, yeah. so the, que yeah. the question is, how do you handle with uh, all of your all of your storage? By the way, uh, you you mentioned doing the food posts and whatnot with the semi perfect podcast. So, thank you for that. It's a podcast that uh, half of us are regularly on, and yeah, yeah. I'm always on. Yeah, you you show up. I can answer that question. Um, so uh, storage is a big, I, I save everything just in case I want to like reference an old file or if someone sometimes, like occasionally some media outlet will approach me and ask if they can use a clip for my videos and they want me to remove watermarks or they want me to remove, you know, likenesses, like images and stuff like that. So I like to have all my source files. Buy external hard drives. Just yeah. Buy them on Amazon, like two terabyte hard drives are not that expensive and just throw everything on, and, and label, don't even like rewrite them, label them by date. Once they're full, just put them in a rack somewhere and, and buy another hard drive. They're like 60 bucks. That's what I've been doing and it's been working great for me. Yeah, I, I recently bought a five terabyte hard drive because I was like, I have too much stuff. Yeah, I need to get an eight. I have an eight <laughs> and it's still not enough. I, okay, so one thing that you said uh, and anyone that has multiple hard drives has been through this, absolutely label your hard drives. Yes. Because I don't. <laughs> and I can tell you, I'm always upset with myself. And I still haven't learned. So learn from my mistake that I'm still trying to learn from. Label your hard drives because they all start looking the same. And then you go, what happened to this footage? I lost it. Also be careful with hard drives. Um, it's no if, problem. It, <laughs> Unless they're solid. I, I lost uh, everything from 2000, Six to 2013 because I had a hard drive that was plugged in to the wall that was sitting on the kitchen table and I, of all people, was the one who walked by and stepped on the cord and all of a sudden the hard drive went Whoosh. and it didn't work very good after that. So. <laughs> so if you have the means of backing things up too, especially if they're very important files, do it. So, do it. Uh, yes? Okay, so the question being, uh, you want to make YouTube content, did you describe it as for growth? Like, I want to make YouTube content that I enjoy, but I also still want to get a bit better growth in that area. I'm wondering if I should make a separate channel, like a separate channel make pony content. Pony content and then other content. Yeah, what, what do you have, it, I guess, so the question would be, what is the other content? Okay, and, and is are you intent like planning on having a lot of content going on the gaming channel? Like, uh, I'm playing with a lot of shorts because I'm playing with those shorts on both TikTok and YouTube. Um. Okay. So, uh, you have okay. Let's hear your thoughts on this. I get to go first. Yes, you do. <laughs> um. So I I would say it is up to the the individual. YouTube's algorithm is constantly changing. I would say a while ago. 
uh, just from my experience, if you wanted to put out something that was very different from something that you had been previously doing, it was a good idea to do it on another channel because you would lose a lot of subscribers, you would lose a lot of views, and your, your, your channel would overall take a hit. YouTube has basically made subscriptions worthless at this point, so in my experience, if I want to do something a little bit different from the standard content and put it on my main channel, it just doesn't get that many views. And then if I put something else out that is more in the vein of what people who subscribe to see, you know, were there for it, it's it's going to get more views. I toyed with the idea of making a second channel for like my hobbies. You know, I, I fly, paramotor, I like to build things. You know, engineering and stuff like that. But. Um, I, I never have actually, like, on, in theory it sounds good, in practice it just takes time away from my main job, which is putting the stuff out that people want to see. And so I've kind of had to make the personal decision to keep my hobbies hobbies, and then, you because then I have more time to focus on my, like, actual career, because if I'm, if I'm trying to do the things I love and also put it on the internet, then it actually ends up taking up more time than if I just did the thing that I enjoyed. And I'm not saying you have to take this like advice, just for me, I have decided that I'm not gonna put most of my hobbies online because most people don't really care about it anyway. And um, it gives me more time to focus on the hobby and not making a video of the hobby, which then makes it work, which then makes it less fulfilling in my experience. So. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, because like there's, I, I've also kind of struggled with that where I, I mainly talk about animation on my channel, and that's kind of how I transition from like pony stuff is like talking about animation in general. Um, and I did kind of like go all over the place for a while, where I talked about animation, video games, and movies. Uh, though then I started to focus more on just animation, and sometimes I'll sprinkle in some other things if I get really excited about it. Um, and I, I've thought about doing like like video game stuff as well, uh, but I'm actually going to be doing stuff with other people to talk about that stuff. Um, so I do have an outlet to talk about it and, and, and everything. So I, I, I would usually like keep a focus on like a one thing for a channel, uh, at least until you grow enough to where like if you do post something that's out of the ordinary, it won't be that big of a hit uh, with your momentum. Yeah, so I've, I've always had, by the way, you two in the back, We'll get you next. I feel bad that you guys are, you've had your hands open this whole time. So we'll get you too. Um, so my channel, the AC Race Best channel, has been like this amalgamation of, of just content. You know, like, like it started out as, oh, this is going to be a Rescue Ranger channel. And obviously, <laughs> no Rescue Ranger content has come out any time lately. Uh, uh, okay, maybe a little. Um, but that was the idea I had, and then I, I got into the pony making content. But when I started going down that route, I also was like, well, I don't want to limit myself to, you know, I, it didn't even occur to me really, because it's, it, at least for me, has always been on the hobby level as far as doing the YouTube content. Um, and so for me, a lot of the stuff on AC Race Best, you know, we have Bronies React, we got, you know, PMVs. And then I have demolition derby videos with ponies. Like the cars are painted up as pony characters, um, and they're real demolition derbies. For anyone here, watch the little budgets. Yeah, yeah. What's the, What does this mean? You flip flop. You flip and floppy. <laughs> That's how the car drives. It's like that. Um, no, but we. Uh, and and by the way, for those low budgets fans, I actually do still have content coming for that, I promise. Uh, sorry about the wait. Um, so I've always had a channel that's had a bunch of content, you know, it's, it's mostly focused on pony stuff, but if there's stuff, obviously, you know, there's some Disney movies that I like, like Zootopia. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, thank you. Thank you for being honest, that it is a great movie. Um, but yeah, the, uh, so, so as far as like having a bunch of stuff going on to a channel that's kind of random, that's been my channel. That being said, uh, in the last year, my wife and I started a gaming channel called Ready Player Dumb. And, and he did come up with the name. Uh, he's very proud. Um, and, and, and with that, what I, we were like, well, how, how should we do this? We planned on, we're gonna make a f completely new channel for it. Because of the amount of content that we're re releasing, we release two videos a day on that of, of all these games that we're playing and 
because of that, I was like, I don't want to turn the AC Race Best channel into a gaming channel because it's it won't be faithful to the subscribers. You know, it, it's not going to be like what they signed up for per se. And because it's such a change, it was like it just makes sense to have its own complete separate channel. Um, so yeah, that, like you can go the route of having two channels, but the thing is, is that especially starting out, it's going to be more difficult having two channels to manage that you're trying to grow both at the same time, but it's not impossible and it's not something that others haven't done. So really it's just a matter of how do you want to divide your content or are you okay with having it all together to start out with? So, all right, yeah, for sure. All right, we had, uh, we'll start with you and then we'll go to you in the back. How important is the first video you would post? How important is the first video like for any? In general? Um, as in when you're starting a channel? Uh, what would you guys say as far as how important the... I don't know. I'm laughing because I'm remembering my first multiple videos and like they, they're they terrible. I don't know why. I just thought when I was a kid I was like, you know what is going to blow up? Me doing videos with my dog. That's going to be my claim to fame. I'm going to be the the coolest dog trainer this side of the freaking west. I don't know what I was thinking, but I I honestly didn't pay too much attention to that because I think it doesn't really matter what your first video is as long as that as long as you're like proud of it and you are I mean you're going to keep improving from there anyway. So if you if you're so perfectionisty that you can't even put out a first video and you're like it has to be perfect, it has to be perfect, like then you're definitely not going to go anywhere because if you do that you know, don't do the exact opposite of that, which is what I did, which was just not caring about anything. Because then you have like years worth of videos where you just never want to watch them again. But, um, they're, well, they're sort of funny, but they're not. Um, but yeah, I would, I would not stress too much about like what maybe your first video is as long as you put it out and you're like, you know what, this is cool. And then you can get feedback and stuff and people are like, oh, I really like this or I really don't like this because people love to voice their opinions of things that they don't like, especially. And you're like, cool. And you either take that into consideration because you want to or you're like, you know what, I think that that's maybe a not that great of a suggestion. So who cares? And then you do whatever you want to do anyway. Yeah, one of them, because uh, on my old, old channel, uh, before I was known as Pio Steno, um, uh, one of my first videos, I can't remember exactly what my first video was, but I did a music video uh, playing with my dolphin puppet, or my dolphin like plushies. Um, uh, to, uh, like, I did a music video to like System of a Down, like using my, my dolphin like plushies. I, I know. <laughs> Where is this? So don't Someone's be, pulling it up. Don't be, okay, so he's not here, so that means I can talk all the crud I want to. Don't be like Saber Spark and then unlist all of your videos, all right? Oh, no, uh, uh, those videos are all unlisted. <laughs> like, because, because well, don't it, be it, like Saber Spark it, unless it's, like, it's from my old, old channel. <laughs> so, it was like from 2006. So like when I, YouTube first started. I was going to give you an example, and unfortunately I, I have my, my phone saying tap to retry to connect to internet, and it's not even to the Wi-Fi, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to pull it up. So, uh, what's that? That's what I am doing. <laughs> I, was, I was like, just use cellular, and it's like, can't do it. Yeah, the, the signals in here is very... Oh, well. Weird. So, uh, but I can recreate it. So, um, I have the AC Race Biz channel that most people here that know me would be familiar with. Before that channel, actually, I have a channel called Low Budget TV, and it's it's where my friend and I have done all these racing videos. And we have like mid 30,000 subscribers, it's had constant growth and whatnot. The first video on that channel is titled, I think in all lowercase, Flat Tire. <laughs> and it's of a, it's of a maybe 244p potato video of a car driving by with a flat tire, the camera goes to me and I just go, flat tire, and it is. <laughs> it's, thank you. I thought so. It's, I know, yeah, that did deserve a round of applause. Thank you, thank you, yes, yes, flat tire, yes! And flat tire! Um, and, <laughs> And it's just, it's the dumbest video, but we're, we always love that that's the video. If it, the channel's, uh, like I said, if you look up Flat Tire, Low Budget TV, or Flat Tire LBTV Productions, you'll, you'll see it. 
Um, my, my philosophy with starting a channel is that sometimes it's not having the perfect first video. Because if you have one video that you just uploaded and it gets a million views, the problem you're gonna have as a content creator is that when people, like me, if I see a video where I'm like, oh, this was cool, if I'll go to that channel and, and, and see like what other content do they have, and that's the only video, I think people are less inclined to subscribe. Yeah. yeah. There's people, there are people that have channels that have less than 300 subscribers that have videos that have 14 million views. And it's because I feel like it's important to actually have content that if somebody likes something that you uploaded, to have them be able to find your channel and then say, oh, and they make content regularly. Yeah, that's that's the thing with like like Saber's channel, where he has different series that he works on. He does like the What Ruined videos and the, the, uh, the What the Hell videos, like that are all but there, so he has like two different series that people can see, and he also does the, like the quick vid, quick quick yep. vids where he does like little reviews. So when one of them gets like a lot of views, people go to his channel and like, oh yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here. So, yeah. yeah, yeah. So so that that would be my thing is it's okay to have that first video be like your. It doesn't. I think the first video isn't necessarily the one that has the big grasp. It's it's going to be like for me the biggest video that I had at the time of my channel was when I first released the Bronies React. Um, but I had PMVs that I had done, I had other, you know, little I had videos. actually seen some of your PMVs before the Bronies React. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, uh, and so it, it gave people some content to see, and I've used that as kind of the philosophy when I do give people advice with starting their channels. It's okay to have stuff, but have stuff that, you know, if, if it's the fifth video that latches people on, they're seeing, oh, you do have content, yeah. so it, it can be like that. So I think it was like a Faust. That was that was the one where I where I pronounced her last name Faust. Yeah, like a Faust, like a faucet. <laughs> that was that was fun. It was a like a boss parody. I was like, yeah, this is gonna be big. Equestria Daily reposted it, and I didn't know what Equestria Daily was. <laughs> I was like, what's this? Um, so hopefully that answers your question. And then uh, we had the other question. Yeah. Yeah, So how so so if you're you have an established channel but you want to create a new series then what's the best way to proceed with that? Ah. Well, what are you thinking? Not napping. Um, <laughs> I'm not tired. I'm great. Uh, okay, okay. Did you go to bed when we sent you to bed last night? <laughs> Why would I ever go to bed? <laughs> um, okay, okay. No, the question was new series, so getting, it, getting it to get traction. Right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that, unfortunately, there's not like a, a specific best way to do that. In my experience, you just have to keep putting out that kind of content until you gradually gather your audience. Occasionally, something might hit, something might blow up, and that'll mean that more people will then look to you for that kind of content, but the YouTube algorithm typically favors, and again, in my experience, favors channels that are consistent because then they know to channel traffic there. And like I said, subscriptions don't really mean that much anymore. You got the subscriber tab that'll put a little blue dot next to your name if you've uploaded something recently. I don't think anyone uses that. I don't even think people know that that exists. I just found out. There you go. Yeah. So, um, and it's even hard for me. YouTube has changed a lot from the days of discovery where YouTube was showing you a video that is getting popular because it's an interesting new thing and you discover new things to where now it just shows you what you have searched recently or what you have watched recently. Like literally there's a great Ryan George sketch that kind of highlights that fact where he wants to fix his door so he Googles how to fix a door and then for a month YouTube's like, you like that door video, eh? Here's a video where a guy fixes a different door. And it's like, that, yeah, so yeah, it, it is, I would say the algorithm does not at the, for the time being, favor um, newness. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't 
put new stuff out there and just try to push it. Uh, I think my biggest problem is that I'm constantly changing interests and hobbies, and so because YouTube is my career, I've had to kind of, I've been forced kind of by YouTube to stay in my lane and just make the kind of content that people want to see. The way I kind of get around that is by making something that I have to make and then making something that I want to make and not hoping that the something I want to make gets the same kind of views that the something I have to make does. And just YouTube's kind of like dance it. monkey dance. Very much so. And I, <laughs> that's what we're going to do to you at Who's Line tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I am cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> Only when we do it. All right, uh, so just curious so I could get a gauge. Who else has a question here? All right, all right, all right. Okay, cool. So, so I'm gonna kind of swing through here. Uh, in the back with the glasses, yeah? Yeah, so... Oh yeah, you both have glasses in the back. I just realized that. <laughs> the guy with the Sorry, mask. Sorry, I need them too. I, I... I have the glasses in the mask. It's a mask. Yeah. yeah. So, so best, also. Yeah, what? I was a question first. Back at you. Do you have a video portion to your podcast that you put on YouTube or is it just audio? It is just audio. Okay. Go ahead. So, the, so, yeah, so the question was getting a podcast out there um, is, and, and being able to find different venues uh, to, to get more of an audience. Yeah. I don't think they can hear you. Oh, <laughs> I'm just saying having multiple social media accounts helps. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, pushing it on as many platforms as possible expands the amount of uh, you know, potential audience that you have. And each website uses a different algorithm to reach its people. So if YouTube isn't finding favor and smiling upon thee, thou mightest find better luck upon thy Twitter. Yeah, in posting like clips of the podcast, can help as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a bit. Giving people bite sizes of your podcast can be a, can go a long way. We also do this with the Ready Player Dumb Gaming channel, where we'll post little clips to kind of give people an idea. You know, because most people aren't going to be like, oh, here's a thirty minute uh, gaming video. Well, of course I'm going to watch it. But if you give them a fifteen second laugh, you know, where they're like, oh, that was funny, they might be more inclined. And same goes with the podcasts and whatnot. You know, it's. Uh, if, if, if you're able to, were you doing a 15 second laugh? Yeah. Laughing yeah. <laughs> 15 seconds. I love, I love it when you take me literally all the time. Uh, so yeah, uh, getting it, like he said, uh, having multiple social media accounts, um, you know, the, I, I just getting it out. Twitter, what did you say, what were your ones? Also, oh, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram, Facebook. Instagram uh, Tinder, TikTok, also uh, with the, parlor. that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it, it helps though to, to go that route of uh, just getting a lot of feelers out there. Also, have you tried with like, there's My Little Pony forums that are up there as well, yeah. uh, where people congregate, stuff like that. Um, or that's, that's what I did when I was first starting the YouTube channel. That's how TrackCon got popular. Anyway, come to TrackCon. That's how, yeah. So yeah, it is everywhere, everywhere. And then people, it became a meme, and now everyone knows what TrackCon is. Yeah. <laughs> Except for me. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't been either. I know they hate us. Why are they here? Here. <laughs> All right, and then the other one with the glasses and the mask. <laughs> so, uh, okay, exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Well, that's a uh, voice actor singer combo. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if there is one best way. I can really only speak to my experience, but um, I literally started by making YouTube videos and I was fortunate enough that after a while I had someone reach out to me and say, hey, do you want to be a voice actor? And I was like, is this a game show? And then um, I went to Vancouver 
um, and I got my permanent residency so I could do voiceover work and I actually, it didn't go very well. Like I booked a few things but not enough to afford living in Vancouver, renting in Vancouver. It was just really, really expensive. So I moved back to Arizona and focused more on my YouTube channel again. Um, I found a thing that I was good at that had like a little niche, which at that time was voiceover, uh, uh, only fans. impressions. Oh, yeah. thank you. <laughs> impressions, that's it. My other channel. Oh. Um, and then, uh, once again, people started reaching out to me. So it was really, for me, it was a matter of getting myself in front of enough eyes that the, the right people saw, you know, what I was doing and had something to offer me. So I don't do a lot of auditions anymore. I started out doing a lot of auditions, but now most of the time I'll just get an email. You know, I get, I get lots of emails, but like occasionally I'll get an email from someone who's like, oh, we need a voice for this character in this show and we would like you to either do it or try out. That's how I got Hasbun Hotel. So I was like, you should try out. But um, yeah, in, in my case, it was Saber, yes. In my case, I find just putting stuff out there, making sure people see you is the best way to get noticed. But it, it takes time and it's not gonna be an overnight thing and it may never happen, but when it does happen, it's, it's nice. That's all, I, and then what, you have a different experience than me, so. I don't, know if I don't sing or voice act, so this question is not for me. You voice act. <laughs> all right, cool. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> I might, I might get sneaky. I don't think the AV person's still in here. Yeah, I don't. It's okay, though. The AV boards right there. Shh. You don't know that. Uh, and then now we're going to circle back here. So you had a question. Uh, what cameras do you recommend using? Cameras! iPhone! iPhone 13. iPhone 13. iPhone 13's amazing. It's it like, is. Seriously. I'm, I'm only half joking. iPhone's amazing. All right. Check, check, check. check. So you, sorry, you I use, sorry, uh, while he's messing with the board, we're this is my smart. phone. This is my camera. There's no like there's no SIM card in this. I bought it on eBay for super cheap. It was brand new, but yeah. it's tied into an AT&T contract which I don't have. So I was able to get it cheap. Oh, that's yeah, why you're doing phone that. Phone cameras are actually like they're really good so now. good yeah. now. So and and if you're doing it depends on the content, but for the kind of stuff I do, which is just kind of close up of my face with the white background and a white foreground. <laughs> um, I <laughs> sorry, it's a stupid joke. Um, the the iPhone's perfect. It, yeah. For what I do, the iPhone's perfect. But was, Jeff would probably argue. No, well, I was going to say, actually, uh, like with the Brony Jack series, it's not unusual for people to just film on this. And I'm like, wow. I, I, I remember the first time, it was either you or Jax. One of you was like, hey, I filmed this on my phone. I went, oh, no. And then I got it, and I'm like, this looks better than someone's bad. <laughs> I've been doing it for years now. Oh. Is it? Um, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I mean, we always tell people, especially with like starting out, you don't need to go the route of uh, yeah, expensive. Is your is your mic on? Okay, I, I heard you say it over here, and I'm like, that is expensive. You don't have to go. Don't expensive. waste money on things that you don't need to be wasting money on, especially if you're gonna start out doing something too. Like you don't really know what maybe you're gonna do with it yet, so just use what you have, and or you know borrow from friends if they have a nicer camera just it's, to see if you like it first. Yeah. It, it's almost like going back to the video editing program stuff where it, yeah. there comes a point where you get to the expensive realm of a camera that it actually, it's like it's not a good place to start because it there's like, oh man, yeah. a white balance and focus and yeah. I, I, that actually applies and I, I love that you said that because it's now making me it's a, I see this in a lot of different um, professions and, and hobbies that I engage with where a, a beginner will want the very best gear the very like perfect stuff under the this, I guess idea that having the best gear makes the best content or makes for the best makes like yeah. yeah and that's very often not the case. It's much more about the content than it is about what you're doing. I mean, I haven't even upgraded to 4K, and I have four and a half million subscribers because people watch what I do. You know, so it's, it's um, also, I have to still use my iPhone to do it. Normally, so it's, it's not that like trends like are all outright bad, but like there was a trend for a while of this, this um, microphone that people were using, attaching it to the their snowball. cameras. No, it was terrible. It sounded like you were in a gigantic mansion bathroom. And everybody was like, oh, I got the new mic, I got the new mic, like all these big YouTubers. And I was watching these videos and I'm like, what are they doing? They're slowly like, every single person is slowly just getting this new mic and because it's like expensive and fancy and has a cool name i don't even remember what it was but it sucked it was so bad and they like weird sounds like that and like it picked up the littlest tiniest like 
kind of sound with your mouth. It was it was it was very bad. So don't like just because you search up maybe like what are the best mics to use like unless you continuously watch like maybe even channels that like uh, review stuff like that too. If you're looking for a more expensive mic, like try and like test it out before watch the videos where people are like using it before just getting it because people have it. The first mic know? I bought was a USB Audio Technica AT twenty twenty, and I still use it. Yeah, and it's 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 a great mic. I have a Neumann TLM one hundred three now, and I still have the time use the AT twenty twenty because yeah. it's a really good mic. Mm -hmm. And it's not that expensive. It's less than $100, I think, or it was when I got it. 99 so, 99 Yeah. Okay. That's still less than 100 My first mic was a blue snowball, and it, uh, I don't know where it went. I think I lost the cord, and I think I lost it in a move somewhere. Did you ever find your amp? Nope. No? No, my preamp? No, I did not. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm going to have to buy it. I'm just kidding. I <laughs> Yeah, we uh, recently actually stayed at Gabe's house because we... Uh, my racing group, we were covering an event, and it is near where Gabe lives, so we, uh, they offered us to stay there, and then he lost equipment, so he immediately blamed us. Yep. Of course. Well, actually, but then he it was believed me. me when to be I fair, said, it was me. Yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no, I happen to have one. He's like, I don't want to go straight to it being it's Jeff's not fault. There anymore. And I was like, I do. Text that boy. Sorry. And we still haven't found it, so. Well, that's why you put up security cameras. I'm in the about bedroom. To. Speaking yeah. of good cameras, <laughs> try the doorbell cameras. Those are great. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Now I know we were circling this way. Who? Okay. So hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, how do you deal with like negative comments? Negative. Oh, that's such a good comments. question. So okay, there's there's one thing that we've always said as YouTubers is that you know you're making it when you start getting the negative comments. You're like, all right, they're here, I've done it. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I was just gonna say real quick, when I released the first ever Bronies React, um, that React was us reacting to uh, a very popular series known as Teens React. And that was at a time where it was very split on the internet about yeah. bronies and non-bronies. And there was like, it felt like an outright war going on between the two. And, and I knew when I released that video, when I, I told myself, I know that there are gonna be a lot of people that are going to show up. I was expecting it to be 50-50 of people that are like, yeah, the video, and people with very not nice things to say. And so, as a YouTuber, I feel like that is something that you do open yourself up to, and you have to be ready for, and you have to be ready to let that stuff go. You know, there, there's one thing between um, constructive criticism of people wanting you to do better, and then there's people who have no idea who you are, you have no idea who they are, and they're just there to try to bring people down. And those are the ones you have to let go. And that, that is, a, so it's, it's so much easier said than done because I absolutely thought, oh, if I start getting popular, I'll easily be able to handle this. I was bullied in high school, whatever. It's it's very it's a different environment on the internet because people they they I think the thing that scared me the most is when people really start going to town, it, it gains momentum. It's like a snowball sometimes. I mean you will have, you know, one person say something and then a bunch of other people who don't like you for whatever reason latch on to that. Suddenly you've got articles written about you, and I'm not saying it like it's going to start out that way. But um, the the worst mistake I made in the beginning is responding to those people thinking they just don't understand me. I'm going to explain and they'll get it because they don't want to understand. They want to dislike you, and they're going to dislike you. And if you give them any sort of attention, they're going to do it even more because you've given them what so. Constructive criticism, like he said, is one thing. It's an entirely different thing that, to have people attack you and to make stuff up about you because they just don't like you or they just like drama. Um, and and that is, it's difficult to, to tell between the two often, but um, generally I would say if someone doesn't know you on the internet and they're attacking you, they're not worth your time because they're not actually attacking you, they're attacking the, this imaginary version of you. Or more likely, they don't even care about you, they're just trying to get a response. You know, it's a way of getting attention. Bullies do it in school, and apparently people do it, like, even adults sometimes do it on the internet, and it's really more sad for them than it is for you, because you're the one who's successful, and they're the ones who are lowering themselves and trying to tear you down, because that's the, in, you know, the most interesting thing in their life at the time. So anyway, that's what I was saying about that. Yeah. yeah. Like, that was even getting a round of, a, a single round of applause. Yeah. One round. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. Good job, Jacob. See, 
see, if you're immature like me, and this is the wrong answer to give, just letting everyone know beforehand, you just make jokes back to them and just, you know, kind of meme with them, if you will. Because I don't care. I'm sorry, I just... There is a part of me, I don't know, I don't know why, I don't know how, I literally don't care about anything. I never take anything too seriously. I think that's the, the real key, is as soon as you take yourself a little bit too seriously that a negative comment will like get to you that that much, like then, then you need to take a little walk to the mirror and just go, you know what, I know that I'm awesome, or I'm a cool person, and I assume <laughs> that's that right, Rainbow Dash. Yeah, you're and, awesome. And like, you've got to be real with yourself and be like, this, literally, this doesn't matter. Like, the, nothing, nothing is, should be ever taken that seriously, especially online with people that you don't even know, and you might recognize their name or whatever, but like, you don't know them, and they don't know you, and that's fine. But like, it, honestly, life is just a big game, and it's... I'm. I don't know. I. I love that board game. Well, that's. Yeah. that's <laughs> my favorite the, cereal. My favorite board game. And I will say, Claire. Claire has a very thick skin, and I don't. And it's awesome. I mean, I, I envy to a certain degree that she just doesn't let stuff get to her. Like she can laugh when people say really stupid things, and I can't. I just. If, if you can, if you have a thick skin, more power to you. That's awesome. I wish I had your confidence. I, I don't, and I had to learn that I don't. I would love to say that I do, and that it doesn't bother me when people call me names online, but it does. It always hurts my feelings, yeah. and so I just don't respond, and it, I'm a little sad for a little while, and then I get over it, and that's how I have to deal with it. So really, yeah, it, it, you can do what she does. And, and every like, person like that should find someone like me who can <laughs> who can make jokes about it. And then, what kind of advertisement and then, is and this? And then respond. <laughs> For the other person. I'm just kidding, don't do that. That's, that's really dumb. Goals She's more. for sale, by the way. Sometimes I, like, sometimes I do like to do that, too. I'm like, you know what? I've seen this person pop up a bunch of times. I'm just going to send him back a, a picture of, like, uh, Beyonce, like, flying through the, the, de the, the patio. Like, just something completely random. And they don't even see it. It's coming out of left field. And they're like, what do I do? What do you do to that? You suck. I hate your YouTube videos. You're a terrible impressionist, Gabriel Brown. You can't even do Michael Jackson. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, Good night. So, so hopefully that that helped with that uh, question. Now I know we had a, a couple other hands up. Uh, just let's see. We got one, two, three. Is that what we have left in here? There's quite a few here. And then we got one, two, three over here. Okay. Do we have any over there? All right. So, so I just want to make sure we go one, two, three, and one, two, three. Uh, we should be able to get through all yeah, of this stuff. Nice um, so I'll start right here with the. That is one great beard you have. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, my beard. Oh my gosh! I oh, thought it was a beard. Oh, it's <laughs> it's <laughs> Gandalf the Gray. I love, I love it. I love that you checked. You're like, do I have a beard? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, if it's a long leg, my face. <laughs> that was so trippy. It just parts. It just pulled it up and it was gone. Knee trick. Parting the red. Uh, my question is uh, specifically for, for pony videos. This is where, where I'm sorry. Uh, uh, hashtags and thumbnails. That's great. It's a great question. Answer. So, <laughs> what tell them, Paleo? <laughs> there, there's, cer there's certain information that I got a hold of because of a, a friend who like figured out. <laughs> stuff about you broke into the YouTube headquarters. Yeah. He literally, literally figured out, figured out stuff out. for telling us this? <laughs> I hope not. Um, but the most important things are your title, thumbnail, and the stuff in the description. The tags actually don't matter at all. Like that's why they make them the, the, the recent like update for YouTube recent as if it like a year ago or whatever, um, where you have to like show more to go to tags is because they don't really matter anymore. Uh, it's only the stuff that's in the um, in the title of the video um, and in the description, and just having like eye-catching thumbnail, uh, like so to try to Photoshop something there. And then, interestingly enough, the file name that you upload. No, yeah. Yeah. really, that's actually important. Uh, so, so when I just so WMV 0001 isn't a good idea. That, that is not a good idea. Put. Put, put, put some keywords in that file. What, what about like mine are just Attractive called like pee pee poo poo, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> that's why you get the so many views. Ready. <laughs> yeah. 
That would be but, um, the fire. So you like hashtag My Little Pony or hashtag. You 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 can. You can put you it in can. the description. Right. Yeah, you can. Yeah. You can do that. Does that Just work? Like for extra Even stuff. Even at the end yeah, too. It'll, like it'll show up. It'll show it. up at the at the top top. Yeah yeah. yeah yeah. YouTube's weird. No, I think That's yeah. So Paleo's weird. talking about the the tag section, which I don't even use anymore because, like yeah. you said. They fully, they straight up yeah, told they just, us. They just hit it. So yeah. it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. And get rid of it. In the Why description is, is, is a keyword. So, yeah. yeah. But but yeah, like try to try to type a description that has like certain keywords in it, um, and that will that will help. Yeah, just like talking about like if you're talking about Mono Pony Friendship is Magic, type that whole thing out. My Little Pony Friendship is um, Magic. M L P F I M. M L P F I M. Gen Names 5. of characters. Yeah, if you're talking about certain Twilight. characters. Yeah, yeah. Ty. Just like be very, very descriptive in the description. <laughs> brony, brony, brony. All, all different spellings of brony, brony, brony. <laughs> oh, oh, and wow. this is an interesting thing I found out. Don't put links in your description. Ah, because apparently, what? apparently, I'm like revealing everything here. Uh, Why haven't I not uh, talked to you about this? Yeah, apparently. YouTube does not want you to leave the site, and that's why you shouldn't link anything that's like all other the, than. All the, but so you can link other YouTube videos, but not like Twitter or social so all, media or whatever. All, all, all my Twitter, <laughs> all my Twitter tags that I put in every React video, they're like, how, how dare? Oh my gosh, that's literally all my descriptions ever. It's just links to other right. things. What, what like you could probably put like your Twitter tag or whatever, say so it's at this. Like yeah. Put Twitter like that. Oh, yeah. but not like that actual. But not like that. Oh my gosh, link. I literally changed them to videos. all the links. That's uh, yeah, because YouTube doesn't want you to leave the site. See, we're all like, like, right with, now, like with, we? like with Twitter. The if you put a link in, in a post of like, oh, here's a new YouTube video, it's not going to like push it out as much because they want you to stay on Twitter. <laughs> but I yeah. always do. Yeah. They won't. They won't. It doesn't. It's the, it's the same thing with. It actually takes extra long. Yeah. It's it's the same thing with YouTube. That's why. Okay. Cool. Wow. We're all learning. All right, and then we had two more questions in this area. So, you and you? Were, th were these the two? Okay. Uh, I know you talked about the editing software, but like recording voice work. Oh. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Um, this is gonna. Everyone always makes fun of me, but I'm a working VA, so you can't make fun of me. I've used Audacity forever. It records yeah. excellent quality. It's yeah. easy to edit with. If you're not doing like crazy comping or like your own, most of the time, if you're doing voiceover, someone else is going to be compressing and adding the effects and stuff like that. I, I have for YouTube videos, I have a destructive preset that I created that I throw on the audio just as a you know copy paste, and it works for me. Um, I I use Ableton a little bit. My brother mostly when we're doing music together is you know he'll take my tracks into Ableton. So even then I can record on Audacity. It's just Audacity has always worked for me. I know how to use it. It's simple. It's open source. You can get it for free and it, it is high quality. So that's again the, the the same rule kind of applies. Sorry, you guys can continue to cheer. I didn't mean to. Come Woo! Woo! Why do you keep getting cheers? Because I'm attractive. But, <laughs> but um, the same rule kind of applies. Like, if you're starting out with anything, people in the industry, even now, like, they know that I have Source Connect, which is a app that allows you to, you have to pay for it, but it's an app that allows you to connect through studios and they record on their end. And they'll be like, oh, you need to have, um, you need to have, I don't know what something. What's what's what do people use all the time uh, for recording voiceover stuff? Oh, There's uh, like a uh, um, uh, what do they keep? The uh, one that you just said. Logic Pro. Yeah, they, they say like Logic Pro, and they, you need all these like other fancy Pro names. Pro Tools. Thank you. That's what I'm. That's like the main one. They're like you have to have Pro Tools, and I'm like if you're connecting through Source Connect anyway, you can't record at the same time because my mic is being used in the program that they're uh, attached to on their end, and so. If you're starting out like, and you don't need to connect through anything, you just need to like get an audition and get your recorded little bits in there. Like Audacity is a great, sorry, <laughs> Audacity is like a great way to to do all of that stuff. And if you, you know, I use GarageBand for like years, and I use this other program called Twisted Wave, which is essentially like Audacity, but there, it's literally just records your voice and it's super easy to use like it's like a start stop kind of thing I use Ableton now because his brother has convinced me to use it and it's of difficult course. to learn but it is it's helpful in a lot of different ways like if you're gonna do comping and stuff and sometimes for auditions you have to like you know put in um, 
uh, instrumentals to things they'll send you, or you get to choose a song of your own or whatever to do like a little clip like stuff. I know you can do that in Audacity, but I'm saying like Ableton is is a relatively it's like a hundred bucks or whatever to buy the 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 live version, which allows a lot of room for like you know if you want to do your own fiddly stuff in there. So that's really good. But like GarageBand also works, and I know people used to hate on me for using GarageBand too, but you know what? It's great. It works yeah. wonderfully. So so we we have four questions and four minutes. Oh my gosh. Real quick, I just wanted to add one last thing to that on the audacity bit is that we actually have a show that goes out on Mav TV, which is you know, a TV station, channel, station. Um, and and even for that, like I'll use Audacity if we ever have to do voiceover stuff. So it, it gets the job done. Um, all right. Yes, your question. So this is mostly going to be for Gabe. She, uh, Claire kind of talked about this uh, a little bit, but I was going to ask, as somebody who really wants to get into uh, producing electronic music and composing, like what's a good DAW to use? Like what are some good steps to really get into it if you're starting to get relatively limited knowledge about it? She asked about the DAW. Yes, the DAW question. Um, okay, so I started out using Propeller Head Reason and FL Studio. They were very simple. I think they a lot of them were free, at least for trial basis. Um, I. You know, I don't do a ton of production anymore because my brother does most of it and he's better at it than I am, so why not let him do it? But um, I definitely would recommend something, while I like Propellerhead Reason, it did not allow to me to run other software through it. So um, Ableton is really good for that. And again, Pro Tools and Logic are also good, but it also depends on your computer. Like Ableton is designed for PC and Logic and Pro Tools are designed for Mac and you can run them you know, using a, an emulator, you can run them on, you know, a different software, but definitely, you know, if you have a PC, I would recommend sticking with software design for PC. So Ableton is very good. And Ableton is sticking around. So if you are starting from scratch and you want to learn something that is going to be relevant in the industry for a long time, I would suggest Ableton. Yeah. Yep. All right. And then we had the three questions over here. Where, where were our three questions? Yes. Screen recording? Yes. Yeah, so different. best screen recording. QuickTime works great. Does it? That's for Mac. For if you have a Mac for a laptop, yes. I know. I know. Like for us, like when we do the podcast and stuff, we use OBS. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, I've used OBS. Yeah, and we're, we have a lot of BS. So like OBS oh, is a. Yes. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, that's a that's a program that we utilize a lot for that kind of stuff. I don't know if you have any. Yeah, the uh, OBS is what I use. Yeah. Too. So that, that's a good How starting much, point. Does it cost money? Uh, OBS is free. It's like, oh. it's, and like it's free. It, yeah, it's open source. Oh. So you that's my play. favorite price. Oh. Yeah. And then uh, we Andy. have two more over here. So was it one, two? All right. So let's start with you. Uh, would you prioritize original content? Ooh. Uh, would you prioritize original content or content that you know was Depends. it everyone would like? How much you that like? That is yourself. an excellent question. All right. I, I'm a bit of a hypocrite here. Because I would always say, do what you like, other, otherwise you'll burn out. But that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> also, you might burn out either way. I, I say it depends on Burnout's much. a good video game. It lasts a lot longer. You, you're, you're bound to continue doing what you love and en enjoy what you're doing if you are making it primarily because you're passionate about it. But um, again, it, it really because I am dependent on my YouTube income, I've kind of put myself in a box where I have to make what people like to see. And there was a time where I enjoyed making that kind of content. The only reason I think I don't enjoy it so much now is because I feel like I have to, and I am a rebel. So yes, he is. So yeah, it's a, it's a toss up. I, I would always say if it's if it's starting off as like a hobby and for fun, make the content for you. Because if you make the content for you, no matter how it does with your audience, if you can look back at it and feel good about it and be like, heck yeah, I made that video and I'm happy with it and I enjoy going back and watching it, then you already won. You, you, you have a good bit. That's what I do like with the vlogs. I love looking back at them and being like, yes, this is this was fun to see. So and I I, I feel like I make. Yeah, I'm always excited when like everyone's like, oh yeah, watch them back. Um, you know, it's something for, I almost make it for me, and then if everyone, or if other people enjoy it, fantastic. So, I feel like that's a good starting point. And then Dapper Hat, the final question of the How to YouTube panel. The final question? I wanted to ask a question about what's a good way to get an I've got everything down for my YouTube channel, but I just cannot 
An animator? An animator. An animator. Well, okay, so I recently worked with uh, an animator for a uh, music video that I made. Um, the way to do it is to go on YouTube. This is the way I did it. Go on YouTube, find an animation style that you like, and then find out if they have a way, like business email, and then reach out. And honestly, and you're not gonna get anyone for free, I'm telling you that now. People yeah. want money for, it, it. animating is extremely hard work. I should know, that's how I started out. It's really, really hard. Yeah. So I paid, I think, $3,000 for the video that they made. It was a minute and a half long video, so you know, it was, it was long, but it was expensive. So, you know, in the beginning, I learned to animate because I knew it was gonna be expensive, but then it was so hard, I decided I didn't wanna do it anymore, so. Also, it, I, just like a general thing, if you're looking out uh, at YouTube, because there's tons of YouTube videos to look at, like, look at someone who has the same, like, subscriber rate as you potentially too, or like, view count, and if you're generally in that same space, then you will probably find people who, I mean, there's people who will if be- you if, if you want it, yeah, either do it for free, then you can be like, oh, I can help you with this if you help me with this, and you can kind of collaborate that way. Yeah, like that's the reach out, not up. Yeah, that's yeah. how like, a lot of us all, all started out, where it was like, oh yeah, we were around like the same level of subscribers or whatever, and we're like, oh yeah, let's, let's do stuff with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and you're gone, and the rest of us are hanging out. Uh, well, that's gonna be a wrap here on the How to YouTube panel. I wanna thank everybody for uh, coming on out. Now, a reminder for everyone. Tomorrow morning at 10.30 a.m., where will you all be? The Burrow. Don't say sleep. <laughs> Who's lying sleep. tomorrow morning at, oh. uh, think, what? 10.30 to 10.15. Midnight. It's, it's at 10.15, isn't it? Stop it. Hold on. What? When is it? <laughs> let, me look, let me look at the thing. Wait. Don't. Move. I, I have a show too it on is at, Sunday. It is at 10 30. 10 30. Uh, who's lying? It's an hour and a half. 10, who's yeah, lying? 10 10 30 to 12. To 12. Yeah. yeah. 10, yep. And because it's not in the con book, I have a performance on Sunday at 11 15 a.m. It's the earliest I've. Yeah, it's weird. 11 15 a.m.? I know. I've never Whoa. done a show that early before. Whoa. It's because I, I wasn't announced until like a week ago. So they already had the lineup filled up. So they're like, we want you to perform, but we don't have a slot for you here Sunday. Okay, cool. So yeah, so we hope to, we hope to see you all. Cancel your brunch plans. We hope to see you all tomorrow morning. Uh, like we said, Who's Line. Is anyone who's never seen Who's Line? Just trying? Do you guys, just don't miss it. Just don't it's miss it, trust me. It is improv, comedy, games. Yeah. It is crazy. We're going to be up there singing yeah, and gonna, hurting each other. You're, yeah, you're going to be suffering. Crying. He already knows yeah, the games. I, I know all the games. Yeah. So uh, with that, folks, again, thank you for coming out to the How to YouTube panel. You all have a fantastic rest of your Friday, and we will see you tomorrow.